Direct-to-consumer genetic testing is an opportunity for people to get access to the same kinds of tests we use to study the genetic basis of diseases to understand how their own genomes can tell them something about their ancestry or their own health information. I haven't yet decided either way whether I would actually do the test myself. Um, I think I probably will. I got the test as a present. I was mostly interested in my health risks, but at the same time I was worried about the psychological impact that the results would have on me if I found out that I'm a carrier of some um, nasty disease genes. So I'm a bit of a hypochondriac. I'm the sort of person who, if I feel a little bit sick, I'll search for those, search those symptoms on the internet and then immediately diagnose myself with some fatal disease. And I suspect I would do the same thing if I had the genetic information. I didn't have any particular concerns uh, before I taking the test, mainly because um, I'm quite lucky. My family have a quite healthy uh, health history, so it wasn't any particular disease that running down the family tree. I've been to spend a lot of time in my life working on my, my sort of family history, my genealogy, and at some point you research sort of a dead end path, and there'd be a lot more research to do you know, in archives all over the world. Um, and I think direct to consumer testing is a really interesting way to be able to sort of um, quickly get an answer and potentially get connected with other people who are doing the same kind of research. So when you sign up for one of these direct-to-consumer tests, uh, you give some information to the company and they post you a box with a little tube inside and they ask you to send back a saliva sample. Uh, I did it together with some friends and we all got together to dribble into these tubes and try to fill them to that line. And it doesn't seem like much, but it's actually, when you're trying to produce that amount of saliva on demand, it's kind of a disgusting thing to do. So after you send back your spit sample, you have to register the sample online you have the option of answering some of the questions regarding your health, uh, history, and lifestyle, which will be further used for research purposes. Uh, a few weeks later, you get an email that they tell you that they've received your sample, they've run the genetic tests that they do, and you can log into the website to get access to your information for the first time. The information was presented in two forms. One is my raw DNA data, and the other one is uh, the service trying to help me to interpret those data. So it has the ancestry component and also a long list of different type of disease and uh, whether I'm more likely to get the disease or I'm less likely compared to the average population. So I was surprised actually that I'm that healthy. I was expecting the worst from, from my genetic uh, test. I was uh, reading about all these nasty diseases and how you can be a carrier of them. But in the end, it turns out I was pretty healthy. <laughs> Prior to taking the test, um, I was excited about the possibility of getting this genealogical information, and I was interested in the potential to have the health reports. But I didn't really think there was anything that could harm me in the information. I think, you know, having more information about yourself can only be a good thing. After I received my results, I was going through the health reports and um, looking at, at, you know, my various different slightly changed risks of, of various diseases and, and traits. And one of them in particular um, really had an effect on me. I, was, I wasn't expecting this at all, but um, the particular trait was something that in my childhood I had a friend who died from it. And so it was like, really concerned about it. I just saw that and it was just like, whoa, that's data about me and I have a slightly elevated risk of this and you know, I just, all kind of memories and things got back and I got, basically, it, it triggered something in me that I wasn't expecting at all. I think people don't realise how powerful some of these results can be and often it's not in the areas you think. It's not necessarily in the medical areas but there are many stories in the press where people discover stuff about their ancestry, i.e. their paternity or even shared siblings that they didn't know, or half-siblings that they didn't know they have. And these are the sorts of consequences that can have serious impacts. There were some things that were totally unsurprising. All of my family is from Ireland, and my genome says that I'm essentially 100% Irish, which is a relief in one sense, I guess. Um, in terms of the health information, there's some things it uh, told me that um, weren't a surprise. So it predicted I have a high risk of the skin disease psoriasis, which is true because I happen to have it, and in fact it does run in my family. Um, and also some totally unsurprising things, like I'm at a high risk for male pattern baldness. It was very easy to interpret your, your results. Uh, the website helps you a lot, gives you a lot of information about what the risks mean and um, how high the risks are, what's the average um, risk, health risks on certain diseases. In the health sections, I think, um, they tend to show things in terms of relative risk, which means they get to show more interesting graphics, I guess, like 
you know, if you're showing how much you're changing the risk over the general population, you could be, you know, showing a graph maybe with like this genotype changes it this much, this one changes it this much, and this one changes it this much. And that's a more interesting shape. You sort of see this big change, it looks like. But if you look at that in absolute terms, it's actually that, you know, your population risk is this much, and with the genotype change, it's like this much. It's basically the same thing. And the other side, a little slightly elevated. And so that's a less interesting picture. And so they think that it's reasonable that they choose to show us relative risk. It's just important that, that the people who are looking at these interpretations understand what that means, and that even though it looks like a big change in the graph, it could be representing a very small sort of absolute change in their risk to a particular disease. I believe that it's very important that information that you get from direct to consumer genetic tests should not be considered in isolation. It has to be considered in conjunction with other information related to your age, your lifestyle, your diet, in exactly the same way that when you go to your GP and they're trying to diagnose you, they don't just try and measure one thing, they consider that in conjunction with lots of other information so that they can make the right choice about the appropriate treatment regime. And so in exactly the same way, you have to interpret information from direct to consumer genetic testing in conjunction with all of the other information about yourself and then that will help you make informed decisions about whether this information really can provide some useful insights that might alter your lifestyle. I have shared my testing results with my friends and family and the reason I'm sharing is one because uh, my result was quite positive. I have quite healthy genes so I was quite happy to see how healthy I am genetically and also I encouraging my family and friends to do their genetic testing as well so that I can have more information of as a family. I've shared it with family and friends who also have accounts on the, on the various sites um, so that they can just see everything about my data because I don't see the big deal in that. And I've also gone so far as to share it with, with basically strangers um, who the site has connected me with um, through my genome, basically saying that, you know, you share some amount of your genome, you might be related, um, people are interested to look deeper and see which parts of your genome you share to maybe help them figure out their genealogy. And I've basically said yes to all those requests as well. Um, I was quite careful who I shared my results with. I only shared them with close friends who also did the test out of curiosity to see how my results um, are compared to theirs. Well, I think the most critical challenge in how you present genetic risk information to people is to reinforce the uncertainty about genetic risk information. And these companies, I think, take that responsibility very seriously to present some kind of complicated uh, concepts, like the difference between relative risk and absolute risk. And differentiating between these two concepts and understanding that your genome isn't your destiny is a very important part of how you present this information to people. I think if somebody was thinking about doing a genetic test, if I had a friend who was interested in doing it, then I would say, go for it. You know, you'll probably discover some really fun stuff about your DNA, and you'll understand what information there is that we know today about your DNA, which is not actually an awful lot. Often in your family history tells you far more, and you probably already know that. But do think carefully about it. Talk to your nearest and dearest about it. Consider what that might, the implications that might have for your children or future children, for your parents. So go for it, but do think a little bit about it.